Hello guys, welcome to my channel HVR Tutorials. In this video, we will see how we can capture the screenshots using Selenium WebDriver. So basically while working with Selenium, in some scenarios we have to take the screenshots, right? What is happening in the browser that we want to capture it actually, okay? So let's say like you are executing some 100 test cases. You will not be sitting in front of the system and see, right? So if there is a failure in one test, you will get the message, but you still want to see the screen where exactly it is failed in the screen. So in that case, you need to capture the screenshot and store it in your local disk, right? Or you can say, if you want to see the step-by-step -step process, how it is executed randomly, okay? Or if you want to document it, how it is executing. But those scenarios, you need to capture the screenshots basically. So the requirement we have, but we don't know how to do it. So in this video, we will see how we can achieve that, okay? So first, let me open the Eclipse. So here, I'll just create one class file. I'll name it as screenshot test. So I need a main method also. So here, I need the code for launching the browser, right? So I'll just copy it from my previous class. So I have copied the code. So here, if you see, I'm launching the Chrome driver and I'm opening w3schools.com homepage and I'm clicking on the navigation bar, okay? So after this step, I want to capture the screenshot, okay? So for capturing the screenshot, Selenium is providing us one interface that is take screenshot. So you can see if you type T A C. So here it says I in the starting, right? So that means it is an interface. It is coming from org.openqr.selenium. Okay. So this is the interface that we need to use for capturing the screenshot. But as you know, like we cannot create an instance for interface, right? You can create an instance for class, but you cannot create an instance for interface, right? So how you are going to use this take screenshot method I and mean, this interface basically. So here you should understand one thing. So whatever the screenshot that we are taking, that we are actually taking the browser screen only, right? So whatever is happening in that application that is inside browser. So we want to capture the screenshot of that browser, right? So let's say like, I'll just open this one. Okay, so this one, I want to capture this one, this screen, right? So this browser instance is actually stored inside driver, this driver variable, right? So this driver is actually having this browser instance. So that means, we need to take the help of driver and this take screenshot combinedly. Then only we can capture the screenshot, okay? So here, what I will do, I will cast this driver into take screenshot. So let me just write here, take screenshot driver. So here, if you see, I'm casting this driver into take screenshot and I'm storing in TS, okay? So now I will use this TS variable, okay? So TS dot, here we have a method called get screenshot as, okay? So using this method, you can actually capture the screenshot. So if you see here, this method is actually having one parameter that is output type. So we need to pass the output type, how you want it, okay? So let's see what exactly this output type is. So let me just type output type, okay? If you put a dot here, it shows. So we have three types basically, base64, bytes, and file. So when you use base64 here, it says output of the generic type is java.lang.string. That means if you use this base64, this is going to return you a string value, okay? A string value of base64 encoded code, okay? Whatever the screenshot that you are capturing, for that image, one base64 encoded value will be there. So that value, it will return as a string format, okay? So the next one is bytes. In this case, it will return you in the byte array format, you can see here, okay? And the last one is file. So if you use this one, it will return you in the form of file, okay? So the file is coming from java.io package. So first I will show you with file, then we will move on to base64 and bytes also. We'll see all these things okay so i'll just use the file semicolon so here this is actually capturing the screenshot 
and it is storing in the temporary memory okay but we want to utilize this right here we are not mentioning anything like save in this location or save with this name or something like that right so we want to utilize this one and save it into your local disk okay so for that first we need to store this file right so here it is returning as a file instance so i need to create the file instance here i will say file file so next I want to store this file into my local. Okay. So for storing, we are going to use one class that is file utils. Okay. So this file utils is coming from org.apache.commons.io. Okay. So in case if you don't see this file utils, what you will do is just copy the file utils like this, paste it here in the Google. Okay. Because just you know you don't know where exactly this file utils is coming from. In that case, you just type it in the Google file utils. So here you can see Apache Commons IO. So go to the Maven repository. Just search for that one. Apache Commons IO. So this is the first library. Okay. So this library you need to add in your POM file. If you are using a normal Java project. You need to download this one in the form of a jar apache commons io jar okay so then file utils dot we have a method called copy file okay we want to copy this file instance into our local right so in the copy file it asks me for two variables one is the source file that is this one because we have the screenshot in the form of this file right so that is the source so let me just put it here and the next one is destination file where exactly you want to store this so here i'm going to create a file instance again with the file path and file name so here what i will do i will store it in the same project so here i don't have any screenshots folder right so i'll just create one screenshots so i have screenshots folder created so for referring to the current project, you need to put a dot, okay, then the folder name. So inside this folder, I want to store this as a image one, okay, and you need to give the extension also, like you want in the PNG format or JPEG format, okay. So there are some image formats, right? You can use any of those image format, okay. So here I have used PNG format, so I, my file name is image one, okay. So as we are dealing with this file utils, it may throw some exception, IO exception. So you can just surround it with the try cache or you can throw the exception itself, okay? So now till here, it will copy the screenshot into local. So after this, what I will do, I will quit the browser. So let me just execute this. So now it has to open the Chrome browser, navigate to W3 schools, then mouse over on the navigation menu. Okay. Then take a screenshot and store it in the local. See how quick it is. So it has actually taken the screenshot. So this file location, I will go. Okay. So, so here is the location. Okay. So you can see it has actually captured the screenshot. See the navigation menu. So this is how you actually capture the screenshot. So in this scenario, we actually used this file utils, right? So, and we used this file, output type as file, okay? So we have already seen this. So let's just see the next one. Okay, we have three types of output type, right? So we'll see the next one. So here, again, ts dot, get screenshot. This is the method we are going to use. And we are changing the output type here okay so now what i will do i will give the type as base 64 this time this one okay so this is going to return me a string value so i will store that value in the one string i will name it as just a base 64 code okay so using this base 64 now we have the image whatever the captured image that is in the format string so now we need to convert this string into image okay so for that, you can use file output streams. Okay. You can create one instance for file output stream. 
so while creating the file output stream you need to mention the file okay just like we created here we need to create one file also here like what with what name and where it has to locate okay where it has to store basically so i'll just copy this i'll change the name to image 2 okay we have already tried png right so we will try with jpeg now so you need to actually write this one use this page 64 and create this file right so you know right file output streams are used for writing the data into that file so generally for writing what we use we use a write method right so this write method is actually taking byte array or integer or byte array and integer variables right but we don't have anything like this string okay this base 64 so what i need to do i need to convert this base 64 into byte array let me do it outside this one okay so here i'll just take a byte array i'll name it as byte array only okay so we have a class called base 64 available in the java okay dot we need to decode it right because this one is an encoded one, base 64 encoded code. So get the decoder dot. You can see we have a method called decode. So this decode is having byte array as a parameter or string as a parameter. So we need the string one, right? So we need to pass this encoded value here, this base 64 encoded value. So let me just put a semicolon. So this one is converted into byte array. Okay. So now this byte array. We need to pass to this write method. So after writing, I want to close this file output stream. Always remember you need to close the file output streams, any stream, file input stream or output streams. Okay. So close it. Once the operation is completed, we will close it. Okay. So in my earlier operation, we are actually capturing the screenshot in the form of file and we are copying that file into local file, local disk by changing this one path and this one. But here we are capturing this in the format base 64 and we are converting that into byte array. Then we are actually creating one file output stream with the file name where exactly we want to store. Then we are writing this byte array into this one. Okay. So let me just execute this. See? the image is captured okay here we have one jpeg image now we have captured jpeg right see we are able to open the image okay so next we have another output type that is byte array right so here it is returning me directly byte array in the earlier format it is giving me a base 64 encoded one then i am converting that into this byte array right but if you use this one, it will directly give you byte array only. Okay, this one. You can directly store this here. You no need to decode. Okay, so let me just put it in the next one. I'll just comment this, copy. So here I need the bytes, right? So this is the third one. So here it is already giving me into byte array. So I don't need to encode or decode anything. Okay. So I'll change this to image three and we'll see JPG format now. So let me just run this. The remaining code is same. Okay. For base 64 and for this bytes, it's just one extra step. If you take into byte array, you don't need to again convert it. Okay, so the image is captured. So if you go here, image 3 JPG. So let me open that. See, I'm able to see the screenshot, right? So this is how basically you need to capture the screenshots. But you cannot do this thing every time, right? This is fine. Now you learned how to capture the screenshot. But you have to stick to one thing. And that thing also you want to utilize in the entire project. So how do you do that in that case? So what we can do, we can create one, any library, extra library. 
So generally in our frameworks, we will have some utils library or something, right? We will have one class file where we keep all the reusable methods, right? So here also I'm going to do the same thing. I'll create one thing. I'll name it as utils. Okay. So here inside this one, I need one static method or a normal one. Okay. It, it doesn't return anything anyway. Capture screenshot. Okay. So basically here, if you see for capturing the screenshots, what things we need, we need the path and we need the driver instance, right? So let me just write the driver instance as a parameter because we are going to pass the driver instance here and the path where exactly you want this. You can do one thing. You can directly pass the path or you can simply pass the file name also. Okay. So what I will do, I'll just pass the file name. Okay. I'll make the path here itself. So now let me just copy this code. This is a simple one, right? So let me just copy this. I'll just paste it here. Okay. So here, if you see what I need to change anyway, this driver instance is referring here. So let me import the things. Okay. So this one, this is the path I'm referring. So this is going to be changed. The file name will be changing, right? So I'll put the file name here. So now the method is ready. Okay. So now we will use this method. So in real time projects, we are not going to write this one, right? Wherever we want to take the screenshot, always you will not write this. Okay. You're going to make it as a very simple one like this. So you kept it in a utils class file. Okay. This class is accessible for entire project. So you can directly call the method. You need to just pass the parameters. So I'll just comment this one also. Let me comment these things. I will delete these images. Okay. So now we don't have any images in the screenshots folder. So just after this navigating to this website, I will capture one screenshot. Then after this one, after navigating to this one, then I will capture another one. Okay. So inside utils class, we have the method. Okay. It is dot capture screenshot. We need to pass the driver instance here. Also the driver instance name is driver only then the file name. Okay. So here I will say IMG dot PNG. Okay. So your file name and your extension. Then I'll just copy the same. I need to change this file name to something image to maybe JPG. So now we will execute this one and we will see it has to create two images, right? So we are not writing this entire code here. See three lines of code. If you want to write this for these two steps, three plus three, six lines. If you want to repeat in the entire project, it will be more, right? So that is the reason we are going to take the help of this reusability. So we will create one utils class and we'll put it into this one. It can be anything utils in your project. You might have something different name. Okay. So let me just execute this. So the browser is open. It will take one screenshot here and one here. Okay. So the browser is closed. So let me check the screenshots. See, we have one screenshot and we have second screenshot. The first one is actually after navigating to this page immediately after opening w3schools.com. Then the second one is actually after navigating to this menu. Okay. See how easy this one is, which type of output you want. That is your wish. Anything is just same. It is going to produce the same image. Okay. You can use the file output or you can use the base 64 or byte array, anything. Okay. So that is about this capturing screenshot guys. If you have any doubts, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. I hope you enjoyed this session. If you like this video, please hit the like button and also share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.